uh, like I what whatever I have seen in last few days about UPID, I have seen how especially the Banaras program, especially the Prime Minister flagship programs on craftsmanship, on art, design, craftsman, whatever is happening, like not only in Noida, but lot many other places where UPID is taking a lot of new road. So many congratulations for that. But then like my prime focus will be on art history, how an institution like UPID and its creative student will deal with the very art historical things and you, uh, how they will manage to cope up with art history and their own specialization. So they have to make a breeze between their specialization and then like they have to do deal with their own specialized courses, whatever they are interested as if they are interested in textile design or if they are interested in product design, whatever they have, like they have their own dreams. But then we have a lot of set marks of art history to go and to deal with it. So I will just start because Uttar Pradesh is having a great civilizational history of their own. Doesn't matter of Indus Valley, people might have uh, read about Indus Valley civilization, Harappa, Mohanjodro and all, but we have ample evidences for those who are into textile design. Uh, they, they, would, they might have seen textile and indigo. There are a lot of indigo's prevalent documents as in there are certain art historical evidences of indigo print which is coming from Indus Valley civilization. So we have a lot of prints of Indus Valley which is like st still today if you see like Avni is from like Avni was in Rajasthan for her master's degree but, and probably she must have seen a lot of prints which is coming from not only Indus Valley civilization, but they are coming far from Central Asia. So they are Batik prints, which is coming from Southeast Asia. They are Ajrak print, which is coming from Central Asia. So a lot of things from art history, which we are dealing, which we are wearing, we don't know our own attire, like dhoti or sari, like a lot of things are coming from different part of the world. It is during this, Kushana period, they say that the sari or dhoti, which is an Indian attire, which probably have their own lineage, which goes to Central Asia. So we have so many such ample evidences. And why art history is important? Art history is important to trace the beginning of the origin of art. If they have to deal with the art, they have to deal with the art history. So Avni, like I really wanted to keep it interactive. So if there is some sort of, even in the beginning, if there is some sort of curiosity, I really, I will request you to kindly rise it. Sure, sir. I will read it out to you. Yes, uh, Avni, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Sir, if there are any questions, I will uh, read it out to you. Hello. Avni? Hello. Hello, sir. Or better, I will, I will just continue. There are any questions? So, like I Avni, I am here you. with one of the textbook of Kumaraswami. Those students who are dealing with uh, Kumaraswami, they might have heard about Dance of Siva, one of the great book which deals with the Indian art history. So primarily, I will just talk because Uttar Pradesh is also known for a lot of great art historical sites. So you are audible. Yes, Avni. With, with I, I have a lot of technical glitch happening here. I don't know why. Abni, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, yes. Okay. 
whatever i said previously was it audible to all of you yes sir it was audible i wait wait a second wait a second yes abhi am i audible to you now yes sir you are audible yeah yeah whatever i said previously was it audible to yes, you yes sir yes sir it was completely audible okay 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 so like uh, i don't know why there is lot of technical glitch so i just i will start with one of the great text of anand k kumar swami because lot of student have to deal with anand k kumar swami doesn't matter whatever their specialization is and kumar swami is known for one of the great book which is dance of shiva so it's it's a must read book for all the students whatever irrespective of their specialization they must read this book at least for once so while reading that book they will get a sense of very swadeshi kind of thing which is now very much in talk with the craft tradition in india that we must be atmanirbhar we must be a uh, great uh, productive like institution which isn't merely going with the western tradition we must follow our own tradition we must go aping our own culture not copying or aping the west but we must follow our own great tradition which is primarily 5 or 6000 years old so basically i will just i will i will follow a timeline which is good for all the students so that they will get a sense that whatever art material or whatever art history is coming from all this respective uh, time era so i will just start primarily with indus valley civilization i have already talked that lot of print indigo print was very much uh, there in indus valley we have lot of ample evidences of uh, indigo print but then later on we have lot of other materials so those students who are dealing with metal or product design they might have seen uh, dancing girl like statue which is very small though it is very small and it is well placed in our national museum uh, a lot of student might have gone to national museum and if they haven't visited it yet it's it's a must go so please for all those students uh, from noida it, it isn't that much far they just visit once national museum and they will get a sense of art history and the indian art and its beginning so primarily it begins with uh, indus valley civilization and you will have ample evidence of not only textile but as in textile you can see it on uh, stone sculptures but then there are lot of metallic pieces as well there is bits and pieces there are lot of jewelry pieces it shows how great we were in terms of art and design so uh, for all the students not only national museum is there like there are lot of students who might have a keen interest in ceramic design so if they are good in ceramic design they must see the pottery work of indus valley civilization and when it comes to the relevance of art history in terms of pottery or in terms of ceramics they must read lot of works which is already done on terracotta works because terracotta is something which is one of the most vulnerable object of the world but even after its vulnerability terracotta objects are in millions and millions of number in all the museums of the world so whether you seek any uh, ancient civilization not only india go to china china is well known for ceramic products like indians are always known for making great pieces of 
metallic uh, art, uh, objects, which is like people who have been to this Kutub um, Minar complex. We have a great iron pillar, which is from Gupta period. So it is one of the most unique art object of the world. It is one of the most unique metallurgical object of the world. And if India was known to produce such great metallic objects, in same respect, Chinese were known for making a lot of great ceramic products. So those students who are keenly interested in ceramic objects, they must see certain things. Not only China, they, if they will trace the art objects, they will have to go to Mesopotamian culture as well. They have to go to Egyptian culture as well. So like almost all the culture at one time, they are all based upon some river linking. So if we have Indus Valley civilization, which was on the basin of Indus, the Chinese have Yellow River. In the same way, Nile is the mother of uh, Egyptian civilization. So if you see the art history traces or the craft history traces, our artistic tradition is primarily based on the natural or the climatical condition which is available to us. Doesn't matter whether it is Nile River or in India whether it is Ganga or whether it was pre-divided India or Pakistan which was Indus Valley Civilization or Yellow River. So basically those students who are dealing with craft must also deal they have to deal at certain point of time with the natural evidences or the natural or calamity which is surrounding us. They have to deal with all those things as well. So it is very pertinent, like they have to deal with uh, nature, they have to deal with uh, uh, climatic condition. Not only that, like uh, if you are dealing with art history, there is also a lot of context where there is a lot of romanticization of ceramic work or artwork. So if there is, if students are dealing with Egyptian civilization or they are dealing with the Greek civilization, uh, many students might have seen goblet and all in which they are keeping the wine and all these. There are a lot of vessels which is used for ritual purpose. These are all coming from uh, Greco-Roman civilization. So they have to deal with a lot of things. When it comes to textile, a lot of cotton works, <clears throat> especially when it comes to the cotton of India, people say, and art historians, recently they have proved that the Egyptian civilization, all these mummified body were also covered by the Indian cotton. So like, uh, like the students who are starting, like who are into foundation course, they must at least see for once in this valley civilization. They should go through the historical evidences. And we have one great center, which is Dholabira. So Dholabira is a center from where it is a port city. It is one of the ancient port city of the world from where a lot of artistic pieces from Indus Valley civilization, it was transported to Mesopotamia, it was transported to Greco-Roman, and it was transported to Egyptian civilization. So we have ample of evidences of Indus Valley coins, which is seals. Since we are used as coin those days, we have seals, we have evidences of art, uh, art, craft, and tradition going to Mesopotamia, going to Egypt, and all these. And not like I will just leave uh, the Indus Valley civilization and I will also come to uh, Mauryan civilization because the students who are in Uttar Pradesh, they have to deal with it uh, and they have to deal and probably they must visit certain sites to know in more details. So you have in Uttar Pradesh, you have a lot of interesting art historical site which has a lot of thing to do with even in present time. It has own reflection on art, craft, and design. So those students who are very new to product design or to art history, they must write a name. And there is a great designer who is Dieter Rams. So Dieter Rams is a person 
who has also influenced the design of Apple products. And if they will go into the details of Dieter Rems, they will see that Dieter Rems is getting inspired by the Asiatic tradition. And in Asiatic tradition, if you will start documenting Dieter Rems' work, you will get to see that he's very much into abstract art. He's very much into the abstractism. So if dealing with deterrence, like a lot of you, a lot of us are using a uh, product which is uh, like Apple products via mobile or via MacBook and all these. So if they are dealing with product design, they must see sometime the work of deterrence. And if you will start decoding deterrence, you have to come to Asia. And you have to somehow, you have to again come to Buddhism. So for students who are in Uttar Pradesh, they must make certain visits to know the art work which is happening during the time of Buddha. Or post-Buddha, there is one great empire, which is Mauryans. Within the time of Mauryans, everybody must have heard about one great name, that is Asoka. Or Pre to Asoka, you must have heard about one great teacher who is Kotil who is Chanakya. So there is a lot of art historical evidence coming from the time of Mauryans. Everybody, like, still like sitting, you, you must be uh, having uh, somewhere, there is a relevance of Mauryan art affecting all of us and affecting our pocket as well. So if we have a Indian rupee or Indian coin, if you see the national emblem imprinted on it, it is coming from Mauryan time. It is coming from the Ashokan pillar. And that comes from the Uttar Pradesh, one of the sites which is in Banaras, which is Sarna. So those students who, like, you have to travel a lot. And you have to know, you have to decode a lot of things. So those students who are interested in visiting a lot of sites, they must consider a visit of Sarnath, which is quite close to uh, Banaras. If you will see Sarnath site, please go and see the works. Those who are into textile design, they must see the terracotta works happening during the time of Mauryan period. You will see, and those who are into not only textile design, who are into the beautiful pieces of art, because Mauryans are known in hairdressing. The Mauryan hairdressing style, it's said to be the unique one in all around the world. Not a single art pieces are as beautiful as Mauryans. They have carved it. And uh, Mauryans, usually Mauryans art pieces are in uh, sandstones, which is quite like you will find sandstone in ample amount uh, in Uttar Pradesh because a lot of reason in Uttar Pradesh, they have a mountainous reason in uh, near to Chitrakoot and all these areas, which was once ancient site of Bharut. So Bharut is another one great site, but for students, they must deal with Mauryans in respect to textile, in respect to hairstyle, in respect to metallurgical work as well. So there is one great art piece. I'm so sorry, I can't show you the visuals. Uh, otherwise, I would have kept it, but Please, the student, do mention it and uh, write it down on your paper. There is one great art piece which is called as Gidarganj Yakchi. Gidarganj Yakchi is one great art piece and uh, said to be the Mona Lisa of India because during the colonial time, a lot of British author has mentioned it as Mona Lisa of India. But it is even far more beautiful than Mona Lisa. It is more than the human height. It is somewhere around seven to eight uh, like uh, uh, feet height. And then if you are dealing with Didar uh, uh please see its jewelry piece. Please see it, the whole musculature, the whole anatomical structure which is coming out of uh, Didar Yakchi will show you the relevance of art history, how beautifully carved it is. So, and there is a sort of realism. A lot of Indian uh, Western historian says that there is no realistic Indian art. There is no realism in India. 
it is only because of euro realism came to india through european standard uh, there is one great artist who is raja ravi verma who is known for painting all these great uh, european style works but they are uh, but raja ravi verma is depicting all these indian gods and goddesses but realism is very much with us and it is with us in certain different way so during the time of mauryans you will see ample evidence again of terracotta but there is a great evidences in sandstone pieces tuner sandstone or red sandstone and all these and uttar pradesh has lot of site so those students who are good at traveling they must write certain names there is one kapil bastu there is one sravasti then there is one site where mahapari nirman of buddha happened which is quite close to gorakhpur and uh, this is kushinagar these are the site which is which is very much the relevance of all these sites are very much important for all the buddhists all around the world but for artist for craftsman for art historian these sites are important to trace the artistic origin or trace the beginning of our indian art or craftsmanship so buddhist art usually started during the time of mauryans but at the same point of time it also traveled to china and farther more west which is like uh, uh, farther more east to japan and again like buddhism also traveled to all these uh, uh, countries which is in our southeast asia we have malaysia we have java sumatra we have bali we have malaysia indonesia we have burma uh, vietnam and all these countries so culturally we had a upper hand over all these countries because somehow buddhism buddhism without even fight without having sending a single soldier we have become a dominant force in asia so to decode all these things you have to see a lot of artistic products so those who are dealing with uh, textile they have to see lot of buddhist art which has making which has been making impact on our textile which there are lot of jewelry pieces which is from ancient times yeah, like there are lot of symbol of vedic period people don't know that like the vedic period is also called as dark period of india because we don't have a single uh, art historical evidence of veda vedic period or the vedas but we have just the traditional which is coming which is in uh, um, Uh, a kind of heritage which is intangible heritage of vedas is coming through generation to generation just through listening from one to other but we have ample of evidences of vedas in terms of symbol so those students who must be a lot of student must be carrying swastika like symbol they don't know that swastika comes from vedas they like the vedas is the uh primarily vedas is the most ancient text coming from from the uh, primordial world like which is quite uh, sacred to us but then a lot of symbol is making impact on us a lot of symbol of vedas upanishad which is post vedas is making an impact on us so you have to see all this traditional work of art craft though we don't have evidence of many of those we have symbol left but it is still making an impact on us uh, probably like uh, maybe i will ask avni now if there is any sort of curiosity in between the students avni am i audible to you yes sir sir uh, till yeah. now we don't have any questions i think they are getting the points you are explaining Okay. So okay. I will, so I hope uh, they will visit. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, see, Abhi. Yeah. So I will read it out to you as soon as uh, they have any questions. They are allowed to post it in okay, the chat okay. box or unmute themselves yeah. and ask you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So I will just continue then. Yeah. So once you are the basic. uh the great king asoka making impact on our even indian currency which i have already told you that comes from sarnath which is quite close to banaras 
but just post Mauryans, we have one great uh, era which is called as uh, Shunga. Uh, Shungas are said to be the greatest uh, uh, builder in terms if people might have heard or a uh, lot of students might have gone to visit uh, Sachi. Sachi is a place, though Sachi was built by Ashoka, but a lot of uh, artistic tradition in India uh, or a lot of craftsmanship happening in India at different places of time, like there is a lot of work which is happening time and again. So there is one single site of Sachi where there is a work of Mauryans, then there is work of Shunga, then there is work of Guptas, then there is also work from Satbahana. So one single site is also attracting a lot of other periods. For students, those who are very keenly interested in uh, drapery styles, drapery as in, you might have seen Buddha statue with a lot of artistic, artistic effect, as if Buddha, which was made in India, who, like most of the Buddha statue, are quite tranquility. There is a calm, compassion in Buddhism which you will trace it through uh, sculptural works. But if you will trace the same thing, uh, after the coming of uh, the Silk Road, impact of Silk Road, it has really, it has created a rupture in Indian art. So those students who are dealing with uh, foreign elements or foreign aspect or external forces making an impact on Indian art must read at once. There is a very small essay uh, that the uh, origin of the Buddha image by Anandike Kumaraswami, where they will get to know that the drapery that is happening on the Buddha statues are not Indian. Those draperies are Greco-Roman. Those draperies are especially from Greeks. So if you will compare Buddha with their gods or their Greco-Roman styles, you will find a lot of similarities. So Indian art is not that sacred which we are said to have it through text. It, it is seeking a lot of inspiration from other world, from external world. So there's one very prominent site in Uttar Pradesh, which is Mathura. Mathura is an ancient site and uh, quite reverend, very important, just post Sunga, just during the Sunga time, a student must uh, mention or write a note about Bharut. Bharut is a site which is uh, on the border of UP and Madhya Pradesh, which is very important, which has given uh, uh, red sandstone pieces, red sandstone pieces of pillars are still kept in Indian Museum in Kolkata. They must see it once because for the first time, the kind of drapery that is hap happening over the stone sculptures are very important. You will see there is a lot of influence, which is not only Indian influence, but still, like there are a lot of foreign influence which is affecting the Buddhist art. Once you are done with uh, this Sunga, you must travel to another phase of art, which is during the time of Kushan. Uh, a lot of students must have heard about Tanis. Tanis is a great ruler. Uh, Kushana time, during the Kanista time, uh, the first and foremost, the first image of Buddha appeared during the time of Tanis. And then comes the silk root, the, the, the very silk root effect. So in China, we still have prevalent silk root, and this silk root is the resultant of changing Indian diasporic nature as well, Indian art and craftsmanship as well. So if you will see, a lot of students might have traveled to Southeast Asia or China to Japan. So if you have seen Ganesha figure in their temples, it is happening because of our silk route. Or if somebody is wearing something, if there is portion of silk, silk is still very reverent. Whenever we wear silk, it is during the time of festival season. But 
the import of even silk indian standard of silk was right but we all know that the chinese silk is very much known in the world and they say that india has also started we have exported lot of our uh, traditional textile work but when it comes to silk a lot of silk we have started coming from china and a lot of indian art especially uh, the mathura art if you will see the mathura art you will see the tranquility of buddha during a time of gupta period and his textile are very much influenced by china you will see a lot of miniature painting of 1500 around century which is inspired by china so a lot of textile work a lot of uh, transition is happening a lot of traditional confluence is happening in this time period so during the time of kanesh uh, student i will uh, i will request all the student they must visit for once mathura museum we have ample of evidence from kanishka time and these are available in our mathura museum once you are uh, dealing with kanishka uh, you must also deal with lot of wonderful text and we have ashok ghosh and all these great text coming from the time of kanishka or post kanishka and then comes the best time of india which is very much need of the arbor which we time and again we want to revive that golden period we must have read about golden period in our school days which is the age of gupta guptas were known as the great builder and uh, for the students uh, they, they must see gupta art uh, gupta art and most of the Gup, gupta art specific sites are also in uttar pradesh so there is one uh, devghar district uh, devghar site where we have there is within and for reason as well we have lot of ample evidences so the temple building those students who are interested in architectural studies they must uh, see the gupta style of uh, uh, temples there are ample which like the beginning of temple started with the gupta period they say that uh, guptas were great builders and there are lot of site near to sachi we have also site of guptas which is udaygiri cave they must read it at once and then they will get to see that a lot of indian gods and goddesses they have start appearing on stone a lot of monolithic structure start coming during the time of gupta period monolithic structure for the student who haven't heard about this word monolithic that means which is carved from single stone and india is known to carve a lot of things from single stone we have carved whole temple out of single stone which is the, the greatest example is our uh, deccan plateau within deccan plateau we have one kailasa nath temple within ellora which is uh, near to ajanta so they must see it once ellora temple how the whole mountain how hold the single mountain and then how they have carved the single mountain and they have made a temple out of it it is world's one of the most wondrous site still today uh, art historian especially from uh, architectural background they are still in ponder and they wonder how it was carved in thousand like at least thousand year back So they must see all these things these are very relevant because these these all things will make lot of impact on your study once like you are dealing with gupta period you have to deal with lot of things you have to deal, deal with coins you have lot of ample of golden coin which which we have made in gold these are like these are in every museum almost but most of the gupta artifacts are kept in delhi museum national museum Uh, hopefully avni uh, will take you all and avni is already like she is quite good in art history and uh, uh, but uh, like uh, during that during avni's time like she has also worked on textile like sorry she has already worked a lot on our rock art shelters as well so i have missed this rock art because rock art is something we have sites in uttar pradesh but then rock art 
few of the major rock art sites are in Madhya Pradesh. And the most famous one is Bhimbetika site. So uh, those students who are dealing with rock art shelter must deal or read it for once. Within this rock art history, but these are also making impact in present time. Because in present time, when it comes to like, uh, just yesterday I was seeing something on BBC. You know, during the time of calamity, during the time of epidemic like this, when there is disease, when there is cholera, when there is a lot of things, it has happened so many times in the world. Art always came as a rescue. And in its rescue, it always, whenever there is certain, if you will read about Renaissance, which is, which is very much a European-centric thing, even in Europe, there is a site which was quite known for pandemic. So pandemic, don't see it as a crisis. See it as an opportunity to excel yourself. A lot of uh, artistic people, they might have done a lot of painting during these days. So they must see, during the time of even Gupta period, there are a lot of calamity happening. There is a lot of war happening, but they have excelled themselves. So there is great art historian uh, who said that uh, during the best time, during the most uh, crisis time, a lot of beautiful art project, uh, art project, art installation, art, uh, a kind of artistic establishment flourishes during the time of pandemic. So crisis is always great opportunity to flourish. I will just, I will just give you some of the example. Uh, Gupta period, though attracted a lot of invaders from outside, but it is the best period during the, because we have ample of artistic evidences. So those who are uh, quite good in ceramic work or those who are good in uh, stone work, they must go and see at once. Uh, in National Museum, we have two great pieces, which is from Gupta period. One is the piece of Ganga, and another piece is of Yamuna. Both are uh, made in terracotta. Again, uh, far uh, bigger, exaggerated than the human size. Both the pieces are extraordinary pieces of the world because not a single piece of terracotta of such huge amount has ever got produced in all over the world. Like Gupta period is extraordinary in creating not only terracotta object, which is Gupta, which is uh, Ganga and Yamna. Uh, my dear student, you must also see uh, bronze work of Gupta period. There is one great work of Buddha, which is coming from Sultan Guns, which is in Bhagalpur area. You will still wonder that uh, still today we are living in 2020, but not a single bronze product of Gupta period is ever created or even like nobody has ever challenged such great artistic tradition of uh, Gupta period. When they have created a bronze statue of Buddha, it was the single largest bronze sculpture all over the globe. Not a single product like that was ever made. Though great was Greek, though great was Romans, though great was Egyptian civilization, but they completely failed in producing single work like Gupta, like Gupta period. So they must, like you must see for once the work of Sultan Gans Buddha, which now, which is now in uh, in England, like uh, in. Birmingham Museum. Uh, during the colonial period, a lot of British colonials, master who came here, they took all the great artistic tradition, and these are well kept safe in British Museum or certain other museums. A lot of things, mysterious activity, a lot of artistic loot also, a lot of artistic plunder happened during the time of colonial period as well. So you must see at once Gupta period, how artistic tradition used to flourish during this time. A lot of jewelry pieces, 
you will wonder the kind of product that they were making in uh, in gold objects in silver uh, gold is something which india was also uh, getting it from outside it was always uh, it was coming from europe but then when it comes to strong products again gupta is said to be the best all over the world so those students who are interested in gupta they must consider a visit to udaygiri cave at least for once or they must see certain site which is quite close to kanpur uh, or close to banaras we have lot of like banaras kasi or recently even lot of excavation which happened in ayodhya those all artistic materials are from gupta period so gupta is very important once you are done with gupta you have a lot of thing which happened post gupta europeans have called, called post gupta as decentralization of power so those students who are also interested not only in art or design but how art or design also flourishes with their patron or how art and design diminishes as in if there is no patron artwork will never prevail so how artwork which got excellent patronship during the time of gupta got a downfall post gupta so there are lot of ample evidences but i just need to mention two or three great traveler who came to india for all those students who wanted to read about india during the past time so you have i will i will just give you three three people are very important so during the time of mauryans if we i told you that we have ample evidence of this material or, or that material i am not saying it uh, only on the basis of material available to us but we have evidences uh, in writing in kind of travelers travel of came to india and they have documented it so students who are uh, good in like there are lot of students who must be having good habit of reading they must read uh, megasthenes megasthenes came during the time of uh, mauryan period so we have one great king uh, ashoka during the time of ashoka period megasthenes came and he wrote a book indica within indica you have evidences of sin you have evidences of fortune how people were greeting getting themselves dressed how beautiful was the city of patliputra which was far more beautiful than babylonia and all those ancient city of the ancient time of the world so you must have to read lot of things to make an impact on art art history is not just about reading once you are done with the reading it will also it will start giving you inspiration it will give you a kind of the, it will influence your work as well so you must see megasthenes work then comes wen sang wen sang also came when sang wrote, wrote a lot of good thing about buddhism when sang is the person who went back to china and he is the person who is credited for spreading the buddhism in china he is the man who influenced china with buddhism but during the time of uh, guptas we have fahyan fahyan who came to gupta during the time of gupta period he wrote the extraordinary work uh, you must have heard about bharat sonin ki churiyan chidiyan and all so this very coined term that bharat sonin ki churiyan and all this this is coming from uh, a fahyan text fahyan wrote all these and after that when when sang came he said india was a like there are, there was lot of plundering loot and all this which happened then he said that india which was talked in fahyan is no more the same uh, it was the time of lot of people you might have heard about harsa uh, harsa was the king during the time of harsa harsa there is already a degradation in indian art and craft so you must read all these great texts or maybe i will i will like it will be a privilege on honor because i have my own 
great library and I'm ready to share the books. So I have a lot of book in PDF and uh, electronic format as well. I'm ready to share all these great artistic traditional books available to me. And these are all translated ones. These are all in English. So if you are reading Megasthenes, you don't need to read it in Greek language. These are all in translated version. But you must read it because it will start impacting your work as well. You can have a great SOP. You can write your own thesis in a better way by quoting all these great and great historians who were once in India. So once you, are, you, once you dealt with Guptas, then comes decentralization of power. There are a lot of kings and queens. There are a lot of plunder, there is there is a lot of loot. But again, as I have already told you, that it is only the time of disaster, it is only the time of crisis, a lot of artistic input also comes. So, if you have heard about Khajuraho, which is a post-Gupta, like uh, Khajuraho and all these are post-Gupta's work. And Khajuraho is again, traditionally, it is one of the world-renowned site. And if you will see the sculptural pieces of Khajuraho, you will see there is a lot of evidence of mirror, a lot of women, a lot of exaggerated women in, uh, in kind of erotic poses. But if you will start evaluating all these women in their erotic poses, you will see that, oh God, they are keeping so much of things. Their jewelries are such a unique product. Their mirror style. Most of the women are also keeping mirrored as it was a great sign of uh, prosperity. And like those mirrors were made out of bronze. There was a bronze casket and then there was mirror placed over it. So you will see a lot of exaggerated women statues uh, keeping mirror with themselves. There are a lot of jewelry pieces. There are a lot of textile, like the wonderful textile work. You will see the kind of drapery that is happening over all these sculptural work. So please see the work of uh, Khajraho or consider a visit sometime. If you are done, like if you will see post Gupta, you will have a lot of sight. Please do consider a visit as it will start, like a lot of work will really influence you a lot. Once you are, once you are dealing with post Gupta, there are a lot of things. You have Rajasthan coming with a uh, lot of Rajputana site. You have uh, temple building happening all over India, Orisha. There is also cl classification of art. Then there is like we have three type of temple, which is Dravira, which is in South India. We have Nagra, which is prevalent in all Gangetic plain of India. We have Dravir Nagara. And there is one Beshara style, which is like uh, a kind of uh, amalgamation of Dravira tradition and Nagara tradition, which is basically in Karnataka region. Just see it because these architectural space will also influence you a lot. Uh, Dravira, Nagara, and Beshara style. I have a book, maybe I will send you. It's a very uh, great book coming from Banaras Hindu University on elements of Indian art, which is with me in PDFS format. So please do see it, consider a visit, because the same, it is a time when rasa theory comes, color theory, which is like RGB or primary, secondary, tertiary, all these color is also associated with rasa. So all these great tradition of rasa theory and all these are coming from Gupta period, and which is making impact on post-Gupta. Post so uh, you have one great poet, Kalidasa, who is again coming from Gupta period. And if you will see Kalidasa, Kalidasa is not only a poet, he is also making impact on art. If you will read, uh, if you will read uh, biography of Raja Ravi Burma, he once he read uh, Shakuntala, Avigyan Shakuntala. Uh, like it's it's a great privilege because uh, uh, when I was looking at uh, uh, Kalidasa's work. A lot of work of Kalidasa, it, has, it is dealing with the nature, it is dealing with the material, it is dealing with the climatic condition. And the beautiful way he is narrating all these stories will 
certainly impact you like it has impacted raja ravi verma the first work of raja ravi verma was on sakuntala and the, the moment he read avigyan sakuntala sakuntala you can see a great transformation of his work and that is why even after almost after 100 years he is still relevant today uh, those student who are uh, interested in working on raja ravi verma uh, uh, please consider a visit of national gallery of modern art ngma in delhi still keep lot of great works of raja ravi verma uh, these all art is housed safely at ngma so kindly consider a visit so post gupta is a fight a lot of uh, small small kingdoms will appear it will get diminishes after some time but it is a time of invasion as well with invasion i mean islam is making an impact islam is coming from khyber pass khyber pass is a space through which almost everybody alexander also came from khyber pass so is our islamic invasion so when islam came islam came through different way it came through non violent way in south india islam was already there in kerala in third century bce but islam when they came through land it was quite uh, i will say it was quite violent way but then the moment they came they started getting a uh, Uh, a kind of there was an indic influence on islam so those student who were working on islamic way they must know certain theories which is prevalent everywhere in islamic tradition there is one uh, uh, we call it as hast behast hast behast is a tradition which is coming from central asia or timurid empire a lot of student must have heard about king timur so temur is somebody who is from central asia but of uh, these all mughals they call themselves uh, a kind of their lineage is completely based on temurid empire so if you will start documenting islamic history you will get to see that oh there are certain rules and regulation which is followed by islamic buildings and like hast behast which is again Uh, there is a onion dome like structure so onion dome like structure is again coming from islamic tradition but if you will start the whole architectural space the garden space of islam and then there are the there is a theory which is uh, they talk about mystical ways they talk about uh, uh, a kind of uh, because islam is an is is a religion which has its origin from the uh, middle east which is like middle east is always uh, they don't have that much of ample water so the channelization of water which is happening in islam or go to any site go to taj mahal you will see the way water is carried out within the garden space it's extraordinary so the, and not only water if you will see Uh, go to fatehpur sikri sometime if you will see the fatehpur sikri wall you will see flora fauna like there are hundreds and hundreds of flower documented which is like carved on a stone and in in all this embellishing work in all these uh, um, stone carving work you will see the evidences of uh, botany the botanical garden or zoology because there is lot of uh, exotic birds there is lot of exotic animal which is coming to indian uh, land uh, during the time of moguls and these all exotic birds are also making impact on our indian textile or even our indian work there is a dodo dodo bird is there in our miniature paintings how come a bird from africa is coming in our indian style you will see that uh, humble there is lot of there are ample evidence just see the islamic uh, um, kind of islam there is lot of uh, things of islam in especially in textile so the chicken curry work of lucknow which is still making an impact so those who are dealing with textile will get to know that the chicken curry work of 
Mughals were patronized during the time of Akbar or his son Jahangir. And Jahangir, especially Jahangir were, Jahangir time was said to be the golden period of art, golden period of Mughal art. So you must uh, need to know certain sites, those students who are in, in um, like who are good in traveling, they must see certain sites, especially Fatehpur Sikri or the site of Taj Mahal or the site of, yeah, there is one Sikandrabad where the, there is a mausoleum uh, of uh, Akbar. So just see all these sites, how important these are from your textile to their, uh, the work on, especially the work on marble. Marble made an impact because there is very lesser work of marble, but when Sajah came, he said that I am no more interested in making buildings in red color because also there is a lot of historian. There is one historian whom I was reading, who is Eva Koch, who she said that uh, the Mughal opted red color from Chatriya of India. So if you, if you will ask any Chatriya, Chatriya caste will still uh, reverend the color red is quite auspicious to them. So when the Mughals came, they started copying the Indic style and they started, while copying the Indian style, they have copied the red, red sandstone, which the buildings, primarily all the buildings are made out of red sandstone. Red sandstone and the color red is the color of Chatriya. In the same way, when Sahajaha came, Sahajaha has already seen lot of Brahminical work because this is a time period. Mughal is also the time work of uh, Tulsi Das, like great, his great uh, Hindu epic like Ramayana Mahabharata's. Many of these were retold during the time of Mughals. A lot of Hindu texts were written and were for the first time documented and for the first time miniature paintings were made on Ramayana or Mahabharata. So if you will see the works, of Mughals, there is sun work set happening during this time period. And uh, Mughals, they themselves made all these architectural spaces based not on Islamic principle, but many of these principles were based on Hindu styles, the Tantra style. A lot of the uh, go to Fatehpur Sikri. The whole Fatehpur Sikri is made on Tantra style. I have a great book by um, K.K. Muhammad. Maybe I will send you sometime. The whole Yantra and Tantra and a lot of things are happening in uh, uh, Fatehpur Sikri. In the same way, if you will see the work, a lot of work of sculptures, because uh, Islam is the only religion which says you can't depict the human work. That is why there is no depiction of human anywhere in Islamic tradition. Go to Taj Mahal, find me a work of human. You will never find a single human work. There is not a depiction of human form because Islam prohibits the work of human on their uh, monument work or in even anywhere. Like they, have, they are told to prohibit by making a depiction. But it is uh, if you will go to Fatehpur Sikri, you, uh, there are evidences of Hanumana or Krishna getting painted inside the Fatehpur Sikri, uh, that uh, capital of Akbar time. So there are like there is a lot of Indic tradition how Hinduism is making impact on Mughals. There we have ample of evidences. Once we are done with Mughals, we have a uh, lot of great tradition which is coming from Europe. But I just wanted to know if there is some sort of question or if there is some sort of curiosity. I just wanted to uh, seek some uh, question. Uh, sir, uh, there, there is a question on uh, Gandhara and Mathura yeah. School of Arts. So yes, yes. Uh, if you can throw some light on that. Uh, yeah, 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 please. Yes. So, uh, uh, sir, so, uh, there is a question that uh, the type of Buddha found in, during the Mathura School of Art and the type of Buddha found in the Gandhara School of Art uh, have yeah. a lot of uh, differences that can be seen visually. So what can you explain yes. uh, about the differences that are not being seen or were they present by the in the mind of the artists who were making? 
Yeah, yeah, great. It's, it's really a great question. Uh, you can see, visually, you can see a lot of difference, but um, metaphor is always there. There is always art tradition. And I wish to quote Kumaraswamy here. Uh, Kumaraswamy says that uh, if you see the works of Mathura, it's very Indian. There is very calm and compassionate way. Not a single work of Buddha or not a single work of any Gandharva figure or Bodhisattva figure coming out of Mathura has that musculature, as in the whole body structure is not at all muscular. It's very feminine. There is a feminine quality. See the works of Mathura. All these Buddhists, all these Buddha works of Mathura, it's very peace. There is a tranquility. There's a calm and compassionate sense. But there is also a kind of feminism. There's a female aspect. Buddha is no more muscular. Buddha is no more male chauvinistic. He's very feminine here. And if you will see the drapery, um, I, like, I'm so sorry, I can't show you that picture. The great Buddha sculpture, which is kept in Rashtapati Bhavan. Rashtapati Bhavan, they took two of the art, which is from Thura. Another one, Rashtapati Bhavan is also known to keep a bull figure, which is on their staircase. On the upstairs case, they have kept a Mauryan figure. Uh, which is bull. But just type sometime on Google Gupta Buddha, which is kept in Rashtapati Bhavan. You will see the kind of drapery that is happening over Buddha. It's very feminine. It's very feminine. And feminism, especially the feminist of present India, they have started working on all these that why during the time of Gupta? Because why feminine, like why feminine aspect is, why there is a lot of, uh, uh, what I will say, it's, it's no more, it's no more a kind of, there is no more balls, there is no extra weight, there is no more kind of, uh, what we say, a kind of exaggeration is not there in Buddha figure, in Guptas, especially coming from Mathura period especially coming from Mathura time. But if you will see the same thing from Greco-Roman style, like, uh, like um, it, will, it will suffocate you. Find any work of Achilles, find any work of God Jews, find any work of God, uh, there is Decatus, the, sorry, there is one God who is the God of wine. And Compare it with Buddha. Uh, like there is so much, like there is so much of conflict of Greco Roman work with Buddha. And you will find God, there is so much of similarity. Buddha isn't Buddha. Buddha is becoming more like uh, Hercules, Hercules. Buddha is becoming Athenian like figure. Ath Athenian or Greeks, they are good. Uh, uh, they have a good Olympiad like uh, body structure. Olympics, like which is the sacred work of Greek. So most of their body is very central to Greek work. In India, body is never central to our work. Body is such is just a time temporal thing. We are we believe in not body, we we, we believe in cyclical world, isn't it? We believe after life. We believe not in our body, we believe in Atma. And that is why in India, as well as in China, they say that if you, are, you, have, if you are dealing with some artwork, first, read to dealing artwork, you have to meditate, you have to go through the inner work. You have to know the reflection of artwork and then the, you, you will have to start working on it. But in Spartans, especially with Greeks or with Athenian. Athenian were known for depicting their bodies. They are known 
for making their bodies central to their achievement. In India, body is never central to achievement. It's the philosophy which is the achievement of ours. Have you ever seen Kalidasa in a sculptural works? You will never find Kalidasa in a sculptural works. But his works, his metaphor, his Abhigyan Sakuntalam or Kumara Shambhav, or all his great works are very central to us. Also, I just add, because it's a very good question, it is during the time of Gupta period, Kama Sutra like things also came. And Kama Sutra is not only about love making, it is dealing with psychological thing as well. Psychology as in, how do you feel when you are in depression and all these? It deals a lot of chapter involves in human senses. So India is known to make a lot of works on our inner world. But Europeans were never, you can see the works of Aristotle or Plato or Sukrats or go to Alexander. They were known for conquering the other world, the outer world. Indians, Buddha never went to anywhere. He just came, sat beside a tree, beneath the tree, and he got enlightened. So we never have this sense of going out, but finding ourselves in the inner world. And this is the same thing which is getting reflected from Mathura, and almost in the same way. I'm just paraphrasing the works of Kumara Swami. He's saying it that Indic work of Mathura is very central. It is very primordial. It is very time eternal. But the works of Silk Route, which is coming from Gandhara, is not. It is very exaggerated. It is very much like you will never find such body in India. Have you ever find a Spartan-like body? Like it's very exaggerated. So this, these are the things. Maybe I will send you that uh, essay, which is good for students to study. It is just 40 pages or something. So it's a, it's a good read because you have a lot of visuals, which which if you will see, it will make an impact on you. Yes or no? So, uh, one more question is there uh, on the importance of the Yaksh and the Yakshinis found uh, during the Mauryan period. Wow, good, good, very good question. Yeah. So, there is one Sal Bhanjika, which is Yakshi figure. Uh, so, Yaksha and Yakshi in the same way, you will find a lot of figures which is in air, Mahabharata, serial, which happened some time back. You must have seen a lot of Gandharva figures flying in our uh, primordial, in our sky or something. Why Indians are dealing with all these figures? So there is something which is very, like whosoever has asked this question, I really wish to congratulate him or her. See, there, in India, it is said that because in art history, art history is also very mythical in nature because we are dealing with religion. So it says, Yaksha, Yakshi, Gandharva figures, they are all celestial figures. Celestial, as in, they are not humans, but nor they are gods. They are nor immortal, they are nor mortals. They are somewhere a mediation. There is an intermediate gap between God and human. And this bifurcation of God and human, the separation which we have in human and God is being collided or is being collapsed by one central figure, which is Gandharva or Yaksha or Yakshi. They are not God. They are demigods, like Ganga or Yamuna. Ganga or Yamuna, we have made them as goddess, but they are not goddess. They are always on the temple gate. If you enter a temple, you will find Yaksha or Yakshi. When it comes to Buddhism, you will find Yaksha and Yakshi. There is always Yaksha and Yakshi on the gateways of Sanchi. Why Yaksha and Yakshi? So they are the demigod. They are the intermediate. They are somewhere mediating between you and the god. Uh, many of you might have seen, in going to some uh, Vesnavite or Sevite temple, if you are going to some Siva temple, there is always one Nandi 
and there are lot of people there are lot of disciple who is not begging who is not praying to god they are going to nandi and they are telling it in all of lies way to nandi that these are my uh, preferences can you please let god know about it so in the same way like people are narrating that please god help me in such and such case to nandi who is a mediator between shiva nandi and the human so it is nandi who is mediating between human and the god in the same way uh, in in vasnavite we have garuda figure garud is very much a mediator between uh, vishnu and the vasnavite so vasnavite will go and tell to um, uh garuda that such and such thing is in happening in my personal life can you please refer the same to god so that i can be blessed by him in the same way yaksha and yakshi first and foremost yaksha and yakshi is not only associated with buddhism yaksha and yakshi is also associated with hinduism yaksha and yakshi is also associated with jainism and these are the demi gods which is always there which will be always there as a protector at times they are the very they are also symbol of fertility because yakshi especially with yakshi they are very exaggerated figure they are very beautiful like the dargan yakshi i told you so these are the fertility goddess because fertility goddess there is a reason why these are fertility goddess because india still today after 21st century and after all these great gadget after all this internet we are still a agriculture based society and fertility it's something which is very central to us we are all dependent upon agricultural product whatever we do but still we are our comforting sense we are all comfortable through agricultural product in the same way yaksha and yakshi and all these figures are central to all the ancient india because their fertility their fertility were central not only to artisans or agriculturists those were central to mother goddesses as well so if some mother is having a baby in her womb she needs to pray all these yaksha and yakshi for a better life or a better child so these are the central like there are a lot of uh, great saints but i think it has primarily to deal with the fertility thing or for the prosperity thing yes sir so sir there is uh, uh, one more counter question can we refer to the yeah, fer- yeah. fertility goddess that we find in the indus valley civilization as a yakshini no no because we don't have like uh, see in indus valley na we have decoded all the and almost all the ancient civilization their script is deciphered this indus valley civilization is the is one of the most critical civilization where their uh, script is not deciphered yet it remained undeciphered and for the same reason we can't call any object mythologically because we don't know if there is a bull we call it brahmani bull because it's it's a bull but we call we call all the see central figure is a bull we can't call a fertility goddess mother goddess as yaksha or yakshi because we don't have a single evidence of theory which is supporting us so there is no theory so that is the reason why we can't call any art object by the name of yaksha and yakshi but if we are calling the uh, remember that dancing girl which is keeping somewhere hand like this a pose that dancing girl is called dancing girl because the person the archaeologist who discovered it named it as dancing girl a person who discovered that beard priest coming from indus valley civilization who discovered it called it as, called it as a uh, beard priest and we can't comprehend it it is coming from a colonial period but nobody has ever dared to call it as yaksha or yakshi it is only after the buddhism because buddhism is very central and 
we have thousands of jatakas story we have buddha chit we have lot of buddha that is why if we have ample evidences of we can support the same we can relate the same with the artistic figures yes sir so so the next question is art uh, art history is nowadays often considered as a domain for high society people to yeah. what extent Jee. is the notion wow. acceptable wow wow who so ever question like the question must be coming from a very specifically i really agree see uh, even during the time of ancient period traveling i i time and again use the term travel even art craft and all this design thing is very much based upon materialistic world see what are our connection with ancient india or the ancient world art design or the artistic field is very much still 6000 years ago we using the tools we still use the tools of art is still the same almost even the colors though there is a synthetic color which is coming these days also in the same way art historians why it is very much coming from the very top hierarchy of the world because if you will keep the central the primary thing in art history is that you need to visit a lot of places you need to have lot of capital money for that and art history is in the present time like you can't afford a single artistic object even like if you were aiming for some great art piece it comes in millions of dollars but it's nothing like anand ki kumar swami like in india anand kumar swami was one great figure but now the rigidity is getting a kind of there is a rupture in rigidity because most of the curators they are not coming from castled class they are not coming from some imperial estate it is middle class and i will just quote because i was yes yes my lord that never ever great minds are never coming from either the top class or either the bottom class it is the middle class and even art history hierarchy is getting brought in these days because of these middle class people because we are like i am quoting vs nagpal whom i am referring because i am very much i am a great fan of vs nagpal he says that the hope and aspiration lies with middle class so if you will see go to any museum anywhere in the world you will find these days most often it is the middle class who is taking the foot or uh, it is the art history which is fruitful to them i don't know how much my answer is suitable but i think by referring vs nagpal i think i have made my point yes sir so uh, okay so the next question uh, will take i think a lot of time because uh, we are yeah. running uh, short of time now yeah. so i yeah. will be uh, emailing you the rest of the questions oh, so, so okay so sir the next question is about the chola nataraja so wow. the, uh, so uh, can you explain uh, the dramatic arts of the chola yes. nataraja yes yes so just i this is some of oh, course sorry, sorry sorry i'm so sorry so uh, abhi um, can you see me yes sir yes sir so there is a nataraja piece nataraja piece here i just wanted to say like uh, whosoever is interested in nataraja piece i wanted to say that nataraja is uh ha so first and foremost there is one great uh, thing about chola period getting connected with nataraja which is a great blunder you know of me like uh, it was only uh, uh, like 
during the time of my PG, I got to know that Madrasa piece was already in our uh, tradition of UP and Bihar as well. But uh, the classical piece, which is like student or whosoever referred it as the Chola piece, it became famous because Cholas are known for making bronze. And even within bronze, they are known through making in a process which is called as lost wax technique. Lost wax technique is still unknown to all of us. They never tell the composition of their material. They keep it, they keep it still secret. Go to uh, Chola Manal, like there is a reason in Tamil Nadu, the artisans will give you Chola piece, but they will never say you the composition, the bronze quality. So I will tell you, uh, the exact thing is <coughs> the Chola figure are important by model, very much existent in society. First reason is because they have a river. There's a Kaveri river which is flowing in Chola's kingdom. The sand of Kaveri is said to be the unique one. If you will uh, Google it, the Kaveri river is the, is, is the is the success behind the Cholas. They are getting the sense out of Kaveri River. They are melting it down. They have still kept the temperature secret as well. Not only the composition, they are keeping it on a temperature which is still not known to us. Once, and they are also making the sculptural pieces through the technique which is of Silp Sastra. They never use any measuring techniques. They use a still banana leaf and all that. Once they use banana leaf or something, they use very natural things. They use the ninefold technique that is uh, preferred in Silp Sastra. Once they are denoting all these things, they, they replicate the ideas on beeswax. Uh, beeswax, once it is done on beeswax, uh, they make a mold out of it, then it goes on on a fire in temperature, then they make uh, uh, through um, that lost wax technique, they make a fire and then they make the composition. They never tell that composition, but once that composition is formed, they can keep it uh, for the lost wax technique, whatever uh, dummy figure that they have made. It is important for a lot of reason. First and foremost, Cholas are not only known for Nataraja. You have to know Ch Cholas were great builders. Cholas are said to be the greatest builder of ancient India. They have built a temple which is Brihideshwara. Brihideshwara temple is in Tanjore district. Please consider a visit again because like what we see on internet or what we see in, on, in an image, the idea is different to see it on, in, through your naked eye. When you are standing all in front of the statue, in front of a Nataraja, or if you are standing in front of that gigantic building, it, it will make another impact on you. So once you are known for a great thing, like building such architecture like Brihdashwara, at the same time, there is also Agama's tradition. Agama's were great tradition. They were known to create a lot of great poetic uh, romantic tradition on uh, Siva. So in Cholas, they are not only depicting this Nataraja, but you can see a lot of reference is also coming that they, are, they were the great builders through Nataraja. They also signify the power of Nataraja. So Lord of Dance, which is Nataraja, is not only Lord of Destruction, but but through destruction, he is also recreating, recreating the Srishti. So if you will see Nataraja, uh, there is a uh, Siba and Sakti, again, I'm so sorry. So if you will see the Nataraja figure, I will sometimes take a, I can take a half an hour class on it. So there's a great saying that if you will equally divide the Nataraja, there's a portion of Purus and then there is a portion of Prakriti in it that makes balance of universe, Purus and Prakriti. So if you will see the right side, right side is quite engaged one, which is quite disturbed one. 
the left side is quite silent one which is sakti purus is disturbed sakti is balanced so there is a there is a confluence of shiva and sakti both shiva and sakti once coming together makes the form of nataraja and nataraja in himself he is the dance of destruction and by by dance of destruction he is recreating the universe which is said to be the best artistic output coming from india anand ke kumar swami says that not a single artistic product can have a higher influence than this it is the greatest product ever made from india yes abhi uh sir we have actually run out of time the session was supposed oh. to expire yeah. at 5:30 i will be emailing you rest of the questions yeah. and yeah. i would like me. to i would like to thank you for such a thought oh. to <laughs> provoking session today no i'm so sorry due to technical glitch i really missed few of our important minutes uh, but then like we can comprehend it sometime during question hour maybe i will right to all of you with whatever question whatever but thanks a lot thanks a lot for this great opportunity provided to me by avni by upid by dr apj abdul kalam university and i would also like to thank all the participants for joining uh, we have another lecture on the 30th by mr sujit kumar Uh, with that we would close we would like to close today's yes, session yes. thanks once again for joining take care and stay yeah. safe yeah oh thanks thanks a lot all of the students as well please uh, do keep keep your great works <laughs>